man, what am I going to do with this PS2? Like, it's literally the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I don't know. Maybe I can just take this to it. I got this package here for a Jonas Restores. Uh, it says it's cash on delivery. The amount owing is one cent. One cent. Man, I don't got a penny. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, well, I got a, I got a box to deliver, buddy. Uh, can we... Do you have a penny? Look, I know you guys got rid of the penny like 20 years ago, but look, I, I need payment on this. I, I can't help you, man. I'm sorry. You know what? Don't worry about it. It's one penny. I'm just going to... This is your problem now. All right. See you later. What, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? Well, let's... Let's see what's inside, I guess. What is up, YouTube? Join us for stores back with the next video in this series. We're going to be taking a look at this Super Famicom called the Super Nintendo in North America. This is one I picked up on eBay for one cent, believe it or not. I don't know if it turns on. I have some Famicom games here that we're going to check out. Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy USA, Link to the Past, which was called Triforce of the Gods in Japan, if I recall correctly. So I'm going to take it down to its bare bones, completely apart, see what's going on, clean it, repair it, do whatever we can get to make this thing looking brand new. Also gonna be taking a look at the color on here, try to get this part and the top part back to what it looked like when it was new. The controller is also pretty yellow. And that's the plan. I'm going to completely try to get this restored back to where day it came out in 1994, I believe. Let's take a closer look at the console and I'll give you some info about the Super Famicom right now. The Super Famicom was released in 1990. It was Nintendo's first 16-bit console and ran a custom Ricoh 5A22 chip capable of 3.58 megahertz. It had 128 kilobits of DR RAM with 64 kilobits of video and audio RAM. It was also able to produce resolutions at 256 by 239 in progressive scan and 512 by 478 in interlace scan and could produce up to 32,768 colors on screen. The console was incredibly popular, ushering in a new era of video games and sold nearly 50 million consoles.
And that's gonna do it for this restoration video. This Super Famicom is running just like new. Chrono Trigger wouldn't even load. Unfortunately, the video is corrupt, so I couldn't actually show you what you can see it here. It's running. It looks and runs like new. Luckily, I didn't have to replace any of the capacitors on the Super Famicom. I suspect it was the connectors that was causing the issue, which can happen fairly often with the older consoles. They get dust or dirt in them, and they cause connections between the consoles to, to stop working, between the cartridge and the console to stop working. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked the video, be sure to click like and subscribe and share it where you can. I will be taking a look at much, much more on the channel in the future, but for now, if you excuse me, I got some games to play. I almost forgot. The controller, you can see it here, working great looks a lot better than it did before let me know what you guys think of the video in the description in the comments and have a good one